this video, we'll be shaping a snare drum using the DigiDesign Venue. We'll use all onboard EQ compression and gating with no plugins. So, the first thing we'll do is pull up the snare drum and see what it sounds like. So, this snare drum sounds like it could use a little low mid energy to beef up the drum a little bit. I like my snare drums to sound more like a cannon going off than just a flimsy little crack. So to do this, we'll boost some low frequencies. So around 200 hertz. This is already beefing up the snare drum. Pretty nice. We'll sweep around and see if there's a frequency that we like better. So I kind of like around 200 hertz on this drum. It seems to work pretty well. Now that we've added those low frequencies, the snare could use a little bit of air on the drum to hear the actual snares a little more. So we'll go in the high frequencies and sweep around and see what we like. And I'll make my IQ a little wider. Just get a little more high frequencies in general. Now, of course, you have to be careful because you hear the cymbals are getting a little louder. So it's kind of a compromise. And also keep in mind, if you're using overhead mics, that you'll get a lot of these high frequencies from the snare drum in your overhead mics. So you don't have to overdo the high frequencies on the snare channel. Now, if you want the snare to cut through the mix a little more, you can add somewhere around 2K, but you have to be careful because this can be really painful and also interfere with other instruments and vocals in the mix. So we'll let you hear what that sounds like. So as you can hear, that adds a nice pop to the snare drum, but in the whole mix, it can be a little overbearing, so be careful with that. And make sure you listen to the snare drum both soloed and most importantly, in context of the full mix. Now that we have the snare drum EQ'd, we move on to compressing the snare a little bit, and this will add some more pop without having to EQ the drum so much. So we'll select the compressor, turn it on, I'll make my ratio somewhere around 3 or 4 to 1 to start with. And then I'll start backing down my threshold. Now I'll take my attack all the way fast right now. Slow my release down a little bit. Now your release time, most of the time, is going to be determined by the tempo of the song. If it's a fast song, you'll want a pretty fast release. So the compressor will let go in time for the next hit. So slower song, you can slow your release down a little bit. Now as you can hear, the compressor is killing the drum right now. The drum has absolutely no attack. You're hearing more cymbals than you are snare. So we'll slow our attack down, start letting the drum sneak through a little bit, but then it'll still compress, which will get rid of some of the resonance of the drum, therefore making the drum a little punchier and have a little more attack. Now if you really want to get rid of all the resonance, you can lower your threshold some more. And you can take your ratio up some too. Slow my release down a little bit. You can just kind of listen and make sure that the compressor is fully releasing before the next hit. And if you want to turn your gain up a little bit, you can. Now, I'll let you hear with and without the compressor. Notice with there's a nice punch. And then without. You're hearing a little more resonance in the drum. Turn it back on. 
So you notice that the resonance is a little better. I hardly ever gate my snare drum because I think it sounds unnatural. If you think about it, your snare drum is hitting pretty constantly throughout the song. So the gate is constantly opening and closing, which means that the background noise from your cymbals is constantly going up and down, up and down. So it creates this pumping sound in your cymbals or even a chattering sound. You have to be careful when gating a snare because if the drummer likes to do little ghost notes, you're probably gonna lose those. That's another reason I like to steer clear of gates on snares most of the time. All right, so the first thing we'll do is make our attack really fast because we wanna make sure that we catch the initial hit of the drum. And then make sure our release time is okay and it's around 250, so that's good. And our hold is around 100 milliseconds, so this will keep the gate open long enough to get the whole hit of the drum. Now, just to illustrate the point here, we'll take our range, be pretty extreme with it. So now it's basically just muting the snare in between hits. Now obviously, this is pretty unnatural. Now we'll play with our threshold. We'll take it down so that the gate is always opening and then bring it back in so that only the snare is opening it. So now the gate's always open. We'll go up. So now you hear, when the snare hits, you suddenly hear cymbals coming in the mix. So we'll take our range, bring it back up. So it's a little more natural, but again, still, it's not really that beneficial. So we'll turn that off. So your cymbals are back. But the drum does sound a lot more natural this way. And in the overall mix, you're not going to hear your cymbals coming up and down every time the snare drum hits.